it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about a nice music streaming service that's coming out that's pretty new it's not really a service but a self-hosted application that's open source of course and it's called mstream if you haven't heard of this one it's pretty great it's got some really great features as well so we're gonna jump into it and kind of look at the software first and then we'll go through the install and of course we'll use docker for that because it just makes things so easy uh, if you scroll down on their main web page here, you can see there's a, a lot of information about it as well. They tell you that it's got all the different operating systems supported. It only takes about 30 seconds to set up, and it really is very quick and very simple to set up, actually. Uh, they do have an Android streaming app. They don't have the iOS streaming app yet, but it says that it's in the works on, on their GitHub pages. So you can jump over to the GitHub pages as well and get some documentation, and that's where we'll look at the Docker documentation. Uh, and then here's all the browsers that they support, of course, and a little bit more information. So they've got a great starting web page. You can see some screenshots, stuff like that. But we're going to jump over and actually look at the install I've got going right now. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon and my subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love doing this channel. I love making this media and this content for you. I hope you enjoy it as well. I do post all of the videos now over at Patreon after one of my patrons made the suggestion and I don't know why it didn't dawn on me before that but if you're interested in seeing them through Patreon and getting notifications through Patreon instead of through YouTube or hoping that YouTube's algorithms happens to show it to you jump over and become a supporter on Patreon patreon.com I've got the links in the description and the show notes I appreciate your support thank you so much so this is looking at the same server that I use for uh, getting my Navidrome stuff, which I love Navidrome. Navidrome is great, and it uses iSub. Now, Mstream is not using the AirSonic or the Subsonic API. It uses its own streaming. That's why there's not really a client yet for iOS. But their streaming is pretty great, and they have some pretty cool features. So if you're an Android user... There's definitely an option out there for you for streaming directly to your mobile device. You can stream to your browsers and things like that. And someone had posted on my previous video about Navidrome about Jukebox. And so here you can see they've got a Jukebox function as well. I don't really have any remote speakers to try, but if you guys have them, you can set this up, give it a try. Again, it's free. It's not going to cost you anything but a little bit of time to get the setup going, and then you can test it out and see how it works. But they have some pretty great stuff here over on the left. And I'm going to zoom this up just a little bit for the folks on the phone, so it's going to look a little funny, but I want you to be able to see what we're talking about. So first you've got the File Explorer. So when you click there, you can see you've got all of your files, all of your music and things, and it orders it in alphabetical order kind of by default. But you can see that up here there's the library, and of course you have a search function. So you can just type into the search, and I can type right here, murder, and you see it comes up with kind of an original song by me, so I can play this without YouTube having a fit because it's mine. Uh, and we'll do that in a little bit. But you can see that you can filter that out really quickly with a search. And again, I can search for anything so if I want. So it does do kind of a, a cursory search this way. And it's not really showing me the names of the bands. But this is showing me the names of the songs. So again, you can kind of look for things by, by song name in this case. So by quickly filtering this down and clicking on this button, I've created a playlist out of all those songs. And it's going to start playing that playlist. Now, I, of course, I can't play this stuff because, again... It's going to uh, cause problems with YouTube, and I don't want that. I'm not trying to create issues. I'm just trying to show you guys how to stream your own music that you own and that you want to self-host uh, on something really great. So as we move down here, we can create playlists. You'll see playlists here that we can create with uh, MStream as well. We can jump down to the albums, and you can look through by album name. So in this case, it's not, again, by band name, but by album name. So if you know the album name of the one you want to hear, you can just type that in and start filtering down to it. Now we get to the artist section, and again, you can type in your artist names, and once you click, you can see the different albums you have from those artists, and again, you can just click into the album and actually see some of the songs you have from those albums as well. Um, and then once you click on a song, it's going to start playing those songs. So here you can see recent things that I've been playing, um, just kind of shows you everything. And if it's got album art, it'll bring that up, which is pretty great. Uh, a lot of these, I don't have any album art for them. And then you can give ratings, and of course we have the search, and you can do a little bit more in-depth search, and you can search by artist, by album, by song file, and of course by uh, file paths. So as we move down, you get into mobile. So you can get the Google Play app right here through your own application. It'll take you to the Google Play Store, and you can use a QR code, everything like that. Um, so there's the auto DJ, which is pretty cool. You can kind of set it up to do an auto DJ type thing, which kind of makes mixes as far as I can tell. Uh, you can transcode songs. So if you need to transcode things, you can have that done on the server. 
And then, of course, there's jukebox mode, which allows you to control this page remotely, basically. So you can have this thing set up so that it runs like a jukebox and you're not really having to sit here right in front of the application to control the page, uh, but you can do it from other devices. So we do have site admin. So once you get into the admin page, you can see there's quite a bit of stuff going on here. So first of all, you can add folders here through the UI. Really, we just do this directly into the uh, Docker Compose file or the Docker file that we use to set up Mstream. But here we've got users, so you can add users and you can set up users with passwords and things like that to have access to your system. Right now I have this not set to a password, but I did go into Nginx Proxy Manager and set it up uh, to, to only be accessible from my VPN or from my local area network. Um, I love the uh, Star Trek symbol here for federation, uh, but you can federate with sync thing. Basically, you can use sync thing to sync up stuff between different servers, which is pretty awesome. You've got the about, which gives you the version that it's at, who it's by, and a donate button, I think. You can sponsor, and then, of course, his Discord page if you have questions. You've got settings, which is pretty great. So you've got a little bit of information here about security. So you have an authorization key. Um, right now, it's set as disabled for file uploading, but you could enable that. You have network settings, so what port it's running on and the address. So really, this is inside of our Docker container. This is not what it's running on on my network, as you can see up here. Um, I have this set to an actual URL, and I'm using an Nginx Proxy Manager to run that. Uh, but this is the, the inside the Docker um, system where it's showing you this information, so this wouldn't be accurate for your exterior network specifically, um, unless you set it up to be that way. And then you have SSL settings if you want to do that through the application. But again, I'm using Nginx Proxy Manager, so no need to do that through the application itself. Database information. So basically, how often does it scan? Things like that. So you can kind of set up, you know, how often are you scanning for new songs and new things that it, that it should uh, know about, which is pretty cool that you can set that up and have it do that. And you probably don't want to set that too often unless you're adding songs like on a very, very regular basis. You can set this to do, you know, twice a day, things like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be super often. Scan queue and stats. Again, if you want to do a start a scan for the queue, if you want to pull any kind of stats, you can do that. And then shared playlists, if you want to do that, you can do that as well. When we start talking about transcoding, it uses FFmpeg, so you can set up some of your transcoding uh, prereqs and things like that that you want. I'm not going to get into to FFmpeg today. It's a pretty big topic, and it's not one that I'm super familiar with. I know enough to do the few little things that I do, but other than that, I really don't mess with FFmpeg much on the front end. Um, I use GUIs for that kind of stuff for the most part. Uh, you do have logs, so if you need to check out any logs, you can do that and download the log file. And then you can lock the admin side, the admin panel, and then you can disable that admin panel if you want to so that people can't access it afterwards, of course. Then you have the player itself. So back to kind of where we started um, with all of the songs. And then you can kind of see there's a player over here, which is pretty great. And then down here you can log out. So I'm not technically logged in and I don't have like a username password kind of login set up. So I'm not really, uh, it's not something I have to do. But right here we can go and we can actually put a little music on here. So let me just go search for that original real quick. Here we go. All right, so you get the idea there. We've got the player, it plays, everything there works well. So there at the bottom, you've got basically the visualizer, which brings you into a visualizer screen. I don't have any music going, so it's not very, very bright right now. But there you go. You can kind of see what happens when you click. And if you click again, you come back to the player mode. You've got some very basic controls for play, pause, fast forward, rewind. And then down here, you've got volume control. You've got looping. You've got mix and you've got DJ. So you've got a little bit of uh, controls down here at the bottom, which is pretty nice on the web interface. So if you'll notice here on the songs real quick, there is this little drop down that says, you know, I can click on this thing and I can add it to a playlist or I can click on play now, which is what you do whenever you click it anyway. So it'll start playing and you can see it gets added over here. So if I go back to my file explorer and I just click on other things, if this is already playing, the other things are going to jump over underneath it and they'll play in sequence. So this side is kind of your list of options and this side is really what's going to play and what's going to play next and so on. Um, you don't really have any right-click options that are different from the browser options, so nothing to, to really look at there. But overall, I think the layout's very clean. Um, it's a little bit plain with the gray and, and stuff like that. But again, for something where I'm just trying to set up a quick playlist and let it run, or if I want to use jukebox mode, or if I want to use one of these other modes, I think it's really great. 
I'm really looking forward to the iOS streamer. I kind of want to try that out and see how it goes. I know that iOS is a, a special platform these days to build for, so I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what it turns out to look like, and uh, I'll be excited to see it when it comes along. I don't have an Android device really to test with, so uh, I don't really have a way to show that, but Overall, I think this is a really great streaming system. It looks pretty nice. Um, again, I don't know that I'd switch from Navidrome to use this as my daily kind of streaming probably right now. Just again, because it doesn't have the iOS capabilities that I'm looking for. But uh, from the browser, it's great. It's really easy to use, like I said, and, and very, very straightforward. So let's jump over to GitHub. And this is not the bottom of the page. Uh, this is about the middle of the page. But right here we have installing M uh, MStream. So... You can install it from source, of course. <laughs> I feel like I'm on Mr. Ed here. Uh, so you can install it from the source. Being on GitHub, that is always an option that you can pull the source and learn how to compile it, figure out how to compile it and compile it yourself, which is pretty great, especially if you want to do development and help out with the project. That's awesome. Uh, Docker, so this is the one that we're going to do today. But you can also use binaries, which they have for Windows, OS X, and Linux. So if you'd rather just run the binary, go out there and get it for your version, and then you can jump on there and just start running it straight from your operating system and use that as a server as well. Um, you do get some nice things, which is it'll run in the background, it has automatic updates, and it adds a tray icon to manage MStream, which is pretty great. If you're an AWS user, then they do have an AWS cloud using Terraform as well, so you can do that. And then here's the quick install from the CLI. So you have a few different ways of doing this, but I'm going to click on Docker Instructions. And it's going to move into the linuxserver.io version of MStream for us, which is great. I like Linux Server. Uh, those guys do a really great job of making things pretty, pretty easy, and they give it some robustness a lot of times where they'll add a few extra things that you didn't have out of the box. So if we scroll down just a little bit here, we'll get this nice little simple Docker Compose that we can set up. And we're just going to copy that thing. Now, if you want to run it from the Docker CLI, you can. Just remember what I talk about when I talk about having your Docker organized. You want to make sure that you've got it set up and organized so that everything is easy to run. So I'm just going to copy this right now. I like Docker Compose. It makes things pretty, as someone said, very um, self-described, which is a great way to put it. So if we just grab this, we're just going to copy it. And I am going to open up my terminal here. And I'll make the text here a little bit larger. So I've SSH'd into the server that I showed you guys that I built not too long ago, and you can tell that because it's called Ubuntu Server New. Uh, but this is the one where I've got everything running, so I'm going to cd into my Docker folder here. First step, always get into the folder where you want to run things. And I'm going to create a new folder called mstream, so I'm going to do mkdir mstream. And I'm going to cd into mstream, and we're just going to do an ls real quick. And then we're going to do nano docker hyphen compose.yml. And I'm going to paste in that text that I just copied. Um, I don't really need that top line of hashes. So um, we've got version 2.1. That's fine. That's the Linux server IOs version. We don't have to change it. It's great. Uh, services are going to be mstream. So right here, that's what it's going to be called. And it's going to use the image from uh, lscr.io Linux server mstream. The container, container name is going to be mstream. If you want to change this name to something else, you can. I think this is great to use the name of the application. It's very easy to find later. Environment is PUID, PGID. So these are your user ID and your, your group ID. So I'm going to uh, change my time zone first. America slash Chicago. Nothing that you have to do, honestly, but if you want to have the correct time zone synced up for your servers, then you should change it to your correct time zone. So I'm going to save this real quick. And I'm going to exit with control X. I'm just going to get my ID. And here you can see that it's a thousand and a thousand. So it's already correct for what they have inside of that, uh, inside of that, uh, Docker compose file. So we'll just go back in there. I just wanted to make sure, but if you happen to run that ID command and yours is different, make sure to change the user ID to the correct number for your user and the group ID for your user. Just makes things work a little bit easier with permissions. Uh, that's all there is to that. Um, for the config, so I'm going to put the full path. So that's home, Brian, Docker, mstream, and then I'm going to call it config. So basically inside the same folder where my Docker compose file is, I want it to have a, a folder called config, and it'll put its configuration stuff in there. Music on mine is in a different location, so I want to map it to where my music is. If your music is in your home folder, then you would just do home slash your name slash 
music, for instance. But if wherever your, your music is, put in the full path to your music. So in my case, it's in mount slash video slash ARR slash data slash media slash music. There we go. I don't have a lot of music in there, but I have enough for us to test with. Um, so it should be fine. We can make sure that everything comes up. Now the ports, 3000 is a very common port, so I don't really like to use that one. We'll use something a little bit different. Let's do 8028. And then restart unless stopped is a good setting. We'll, we'll use that. So this port you can kind of set to any port on your host that is not in use. The right side you should never change on Docker files because this is what the Docker container itself is expecting and this is what the application says that it uses. So you really shouldn't change this unless you know what you're doing, you're a developer and you know what you're doing there. But on the left side, this is the host port that you're mapping to that port inside the container. It's kind of like port forwarding. So you're saying, I want this port, whenever I call it, to go to this inside port on the container. So this one, as long as it's an open port on your system, you can set it to whatever you want. That's why I said 8028 should be an open port that I haven't used yet, which uh, makes things really easy. So we're just going to save this with control O and then enter control X to exit out of nano. We'll clear the screen here. And what we're going to do is bring this up with Docker hyphen compose up hyphen D. So this is going to go out and it's going to pull down mstream from the Linux server uh, system. Now it says everything's done, and one of the things you can do with Docker Compose is you can say docker hyphen compose logs dash f mstream. And you can see the logs that are coming up, so it says mstream right here. And you can kind of watch the logs as everything is happening, and it says the config file does not have does not have a secret, so it's generating a secret and saving it. And it says mstream completed with code zero, so it looks like everything's running. We can jump out of the logs here. And we can clear that, and now we can go back to our browser. We'll just open up a new tab, and we'll go to the IP address of that server. Yeah, and here's Mstream. So right away, it's got all my music listed, which is great. So I do have, I have more music in there than I thought. Um, now, I don't have all of the stuff pulled down. I didn't use Music Brains or anything on this, so it's not going to have a lot of the metadata. But right away, you can see that Mstream is up. I didn't have to log in, but again, you can go into your settings. You can set up all of your logins, all of your information. You can make sure it's secure. And again, we can set up Nginx Proxy Manager to point us to this. So we'll go do that real quick. So if you don't have Nginx Proxy Manager, I have videos out there on how to install it. And there's some updated videos, so make sure to go check the Nginx Proxy Manager website uh, to get the right file. But you just need a Docker Compose file. You bring it up real quick. I've got a script that will install Docker, Docker Compose, Nginx Proxy Manager, and Portainer for you if you want to use that as well. So I'm going to jump over to this page. And I'm going to bring up Nginx Proxy Manager. Log in. So this is how I proxy information from outside of my network to inside my network, basically. And I'm going to go to Hosts, Proxy Hosts, and I'm going to add a new host. So I want to give this a name. Now, what you want to have set up is a domain name. So something like mysuperdomain.com. And you want to go into the DNS settings of that domain name. And if you don't know how to do this stuff, there's videos out there on this. I have videos on this as well. But essentially, you want to set a wildcard entry. And I have asterisk.routemehome.org that points to my home address. So anytime I create a new routemehome.org site, it points to my home address automatically. And then I keep that up to date with dynamic DNS. Um, so I have, I just want to create a new site so I can basically create new sites here in Nginx Proxy Manager. I don't have to go set an A record for every single one of them, which is great. So I'm going to create a new site, and let's just call that uh, mstream.routemehome.org. I'm going to tab to make sure it makes this little chip. You can tab or press enter, either one. And then I want to give that the address of my server. And then the, the outside port that we used is 8028. So I'm going to say uh, WebSocket support, block common exploits, and then I'm going to leave it publicly accessible for just a minute. I'm just going to save this and make sure I can get through to it on the HTTP address I just created. So right here we see mstream.routemehome.org. I'm going to click on that. And you see it does come up, which is what we want. So that's great. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit that entry. So I'm going to go over here to the right. I'm going to click on the three dots. I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to jump over to the SSL tab. 
I'm going to say request a new certificate. I'm going to say force SSL and I consent to the Let's Encrypt Terms of Service. I have my email in here and then I'm going to click on this button. Let's Encrypt is going to challenge that domain name and say can I reach it on port 80 and if so it's going to be happy and it's going to give me a Let's Encrypt certificate. So now if we click it's going to open that up and you'll see it's got the HTTPS lock and it's a secure certificate. It didn't give me any warning about going to this page or anything like that. It's a CA cert from Let's Encrypt. Now it will have to redo itself every 90 days. So one of the things I'm about to do is going to stop that from happening, but that's okay. Right now, I'm going to show you something that helps you keep your sites secure from outside traffic. So in Nginx Proxy Manager, I'm going to close this one more time. And I'll close this one too, just so you know that I'm not opening up the same one over and over and over. We'll go close these down. We're done with them. Um, so I'm going to go back into my M stream one more time. I'm going to do edit. And right here you see this says publicly accessible which means it's not checking anything if i go to mstream.robinhome.org it just goes right to my music so i'm going to click on this and you'll see i've got this uh, other option here which i created in the acl section of uh, nginx proxy manager in that section i said i'm only going to allow it if it's got an ip address from my internal network or from my vpn network so now with that set i'm going to open it up and it should still open without a problem. And it does, and I can get here and I can do everything I wanna do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just uh, connect to a VPN real quick so that it changes my IP address. And this of course will not be my normal VPN, it'll be a separate VPN. It immediately pops up and asks me for my login credentials. So I either need to log in or I'll have to get back on a network that has an IP address that it's looking for. So this is a great way to protect your internal services on your home lab, but still allow yourself to have access to those services. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to close it. I'm going to get back off of that VPN. And I'm going to get onto a VPN uh, that is my VPN. So now I'm going to click on it again. So now it pops up again because I've got a public IP address that I've told it to expect. And that's the public IP address of my VPN. Great way to connect back to your home lab, but keep things nice and secure when you're connecting to your internal network assets. So that's MStream. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it's useful to you. I hope you'll get out there and check it out, see what you think of it, especially if you're an Android user. It's got a great streaming uh, app from what I understand, so I hope you give it a try. If you have trouble with it, let me know. If you think something could be better about it, let the developer know. Go over to GitHub and leave an issue. Um, people want to improve their, their products, and they want to make sure that they're getting used out there, so definitely do that. If you use it and you like it and you stick with it, think about giving a donation. Help support the ongoing development of something like this. Make sure you support those developers for those open source projects. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.